I don't know how to cook. I never learned. I should have. My mom tried to teach me growing up. I was arrogant about it. I was like, I don't need to learn this now. I know where the grocery store is. I'll figure it out when I'm an adult. <laughs> and then I tried to do that and realized that is impossible because if you don't know how to cook, you also don't know how to shop because foods are not together in the grocery store. The grocery store is a place where someone has disassembled foods and hid the pieces all over a building. I gotta wander around a warehouse trying to reverse engineer tacos from memory. So like I could cook, but it would just be worse. And that's no good for anybody because groceries cost the same regardless of your skill level. I found that out as well. I can't cut a deal with the butcher. Like, listen, I'm gonna ruin these steaks, I promise. <laughs> We're talking brown all the way through. I don't know how to make them pink in the middle. I've never seen it. Anyone anyway, you could knock a couple of bucks off? But no, there's no such thing as training steaks. So my wife cooks. And in exchange, I do the dishes. I'm told this is a very common arrangement with successful couples, right? Cook people love bringing it up. If you're not gonna cook, you gotta do the dishes. That's fair, that's even, that's the trade. And while I am willing to do the dishes, I do not agree that this is an even trade. <laughs> now I know there are dish people in this room right now that are hesitant to get on board with me because you are sitting with the cook person in your life. <laughs> and that is fine, stare straight ahead quietly. I'll say what needs to be said. <laughs> dishes sucks, all right, cooks? Sucks the whole time. It's not satisfying or fulfilling. There's no fun new dish recipes that we get to try. And it's even worse doing the dishes for someone who is cooking and knows that they will not be doing the dishes. Because this causes them to use every possible dish. I'll just put this mustard into a little bowl and then I'll put it in the pan. Just take it out of the jar and put it in the pan. For God's sake, run the spoon under some water for three seconds. <laughs> Instead of just gluing it to the countertop. There you go, it lives there now. <laughs> Get that off in the morning with a butter knife. <laughs> Dishes is awful, right? It's what they threaten you with at a restaurant if you can't pay your bill. They don't mention the police. They're like, you're gonna have to do dishes. The worst thing in the world. <laughs> Cooking's not even close. People love cooking, right? They devote their lives to it. There's entire TV shows where they watch other people do it. Every single one of those shows, they put a camera in their face. What are you gonna do if you win the cooking cook contest? And they all go, I'm gonna buy a restaurant so I can cook all the time. I love cooking. <laughs> there is not one show <laughs> devoted to dishes. <laughs> we don't get a show. There's no show called Scrubbed. <laughs> I'm like, all right, under this cloth, there's a bunch of dirty dishes. You can use any kind of sponge you want. Everybody ready? It's all cast iron pans. Yeah! So my wife cooks, is what I'm telling you. And uh, I, I'm the snack man, all right? I love snacks, I love choosing snacks, I like offering snacks, I like eating snacks. I like all snacks. I do have a favorite snack. I do think the top snack in the world is popcorn. Popcorn's number one. It is on top, in my opinion, because of its versatility. First of all, you do anything with popcorn. Whatever mood you're in, popcorn's got you covered, right? You can put cheese on it, caramel, you take a left into Savory Town, or you can drive down the road to Sweetville. Popcorn's riding shotgun the whole time. <laughs> you don't even have to eat it. You can put it on a string for a wedding in a trailer park. <laughs> I believe that popcorn is so good that it's the reason why we all have microwaves. Because they're not good at anything else. General Electric should be digging up Orville Redenbacher and kissing him on the lips every weekend. <laughs> He sold every microwave in rotation today. If you think I'm lying, go look at a microwave. What does the top left button say? Yeah, it says popcorn, all right? It's above the numbers. Do you understand? They're like, don't do math. That's for burritos. We know why you're here. <laughs> microwave popcorn was incredible. It changed the game. And I think the reason why microwave popcorn was so successful is because some people in this audience may be old enough to remember what it was like to make popcorn at home before the microwave? Yeah, it was like cooking meth. 
It was insane. It was quite literally the most dangerous thing you could do on a residential property. Parents would be like, get the kids out of the kitchen. I'm making popcorn out here. Turn their faces away from the oil. By the way, I'm pretty sure our insurance doesn't cover this. So uh, if anything goes wrong, uh, I was baking a pie, a corn pie. You all saw me. But we were willing to do it because popcorn's incredible. Now, I know there are people that disagree with me. They say, I mean, popcorn can't be number one because it gets stuck in your teeth. And yes, it does get stuck in your teeth and that feels bad, but that bad feeling is offset by how good it feels when you finally get it out of there. <laughs> so popcorn, back on top, number one. In fact, now I love that it gets stuck in your teeth because now you've just postponed a good feeling for later on. And who among us couldn't use that in these dark, uncertain times? <laughs> Think about it, eat a bowl of popcorn, you watch your favorite movie, everything's going great, but then the movie's too long. You stayed up too late, it's a work night, oh no. I don't have time to brush my teeth, I gotta go right to bed. So you go to bed, you put your phone away, turn the light out, now the only light left in the room is your digital clock. Why do you still have one? You don't know, but there it is. <laughs> Floating in the dark, taunting you with how little sleep you're gonna get. If only you couldn't do math at this hour, but you can. Your brain keeps running the numbers and it keeps coming up short. And for some reason, this wakes you up more. I don't know why our minds do this. They're like, I am not gonna get enough sleep. How can I sleep at a time like this? I better stay as awake as possible and rapidly categorize all possible future failings. And as your thoughts begin to collide with the jagged edge of tomorrow's responsibilities, your tongue begins to explore the crevices of your teeth. And all of a sudden you make contact with that old familiar kernel skin lodged in your back molar. You forgot it was there, now it's all you can focus on. And you wish for a second that your tongue had an ounce more dexterity. Oh, if only I could come at it from another angle, but you can't. All you can do is push feebly on it in the same direction you already tried 30 times prior. You think I'll get my finger involved. Finger is the master of dexterity. Finger will help. Finger can't help. Finger can't even find it. It's hopelessly lost. Keep touching it with the end of your tongue. It's right there, finger. Next, you try to help your stupid finger by counting your own teeth. Like a lunatic. How many do I even have? Okay, it's three back. Go, finger, go! But this doesn't work. You have to abandon your dumb hand altogether. Just when you think all hope is lost, just when you're dangling over the event horizon of permanent despair, you reach down deep and give it one more push. What the hell? Why not? But this time it's different. This time it moves a little bit. New hope springs eternal. You give it a couple more pushes and it flies free. Oh, do you spit it out? Not yet. First, it's time for a tiny celebration inside your mouth. First thing you do is put the kernel skin onto the end of your tongue like a little hat. And then you slide it in between your top and bottom front teeth and give it a bunch of tiny, tiny bites. As it disintegrates, you receive a rush of serotonin and dopamine that is better than drugs. What other snack does that? <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. And thank you to everybody that did the tiny little bites along with me. I saw you. Now, my favorite thing about popcorn, though, definitely has to be, there is no way anybody knew corn was gonna do that. <laughs> like, before there was popcorn, no one could have guessed that that was gonna happen. You could have taken the smartest person in the world, made them look at a cob of corn, and be like, hey, what do you think happens if you let this dry out and then heat it up? <laughs> they certainly wouldn't have gone, I bet each kernel explodes only a little bit into a delicious soft snack you could put in a bowl. Nobody knew that. <laughs> That would have been an insane guess, which means the popcorn must have been discovered by accident, and why don't we know that story? Where's that Netflix documentary? Why the hell did we all have to watch Tiger King? I want to know who found popcorn. 
I don't know how it went down. I have to imagine. I guess it was a family somewhere procured some corn, cared for it inappropriately. <laughs> the young son had to deliver the news. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> He's probably taller. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> the corn is too dry. <laughs> we cannot eat it. This is a shame, son. Well, at least we won't freeze to death. Throw it on the fire. <laughs> One to three minutes later. <laughs> oh, you're never gonna believe this. What's happening? No time to explain. Bring cheese, caramel. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, but I do love all snacks almost as much as I love popcorn. What I don't love is uh, healthy people coming for snacks, right? They came for our meals and we let them. And now they're coming for snacks, and I don't think that's appropriate, all right? Snacks are a reward for eating healthy the rest of the time. I eat three gross meals I do not enjoy, and then at 11 o'clock at night, three bags of chips and a bowl of ice cream. That's how we do it. Now they want us to be healthy, like you have healthy snacks on hand. I don't even know what that is. I had to ask, I was like, what? What are the healthy snacks I should have? And they told me it's nuts, Ivan. You forgot about nuts, didn't you? Probably because they're illegal in every elementary school. <laughs> Did you know that if you're an adult, you can just go get nuts? It's not even that hard. You just need money. They're in the grocery store, I found out, next to the chips, which I think is a bad spot. Because then you are forced to see, by comparison to chips, how expensive nuts are. I had no idea. A bag of chips is like $2, and it's the size of my pillow. You know how much $2 worth of nuts is? Three and a half almonds. That's not enough for a snack. I remember the first time I saw the price on a bag of pistachios. And I remember it very clearly because it shattered my brain. I was like, I can't believe I've ever had one of these. I've never been in a Ferrari. How have I had a pistachio? These shouldn't be in my life. So I thought, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to break the bank on these snack nuts, I want to go all the way to the top. I want the biggest bang for my nut buck. I want the healthiest possible nuts. So I asked them what it was. I said, what's the healthiest one? I'll just start there. And they said, it's walnuts, Ivan. Everybody knows that. And I said, I don't think anybody knows that. They said, yeah, walnuts are incredible. They are so healthy, you can eat as many walnuts as you want. And I said, wow, that is great news, because I'm actually already doing that. Zero, they're gross. <laughs> walnuts are disgusting. If you don't believe me, eat a walnut and tell me if it's gone bad. You don't know, no one does. <laughs> Every single time I have eaten a raw walnut, I'm like, nope, those are off, call the hospital. <laughs> I just opened the bag. Really? Because I think I just ate a spider covered in wood. <laughs> That's what that tasted like. Is that what it was a bag of? Like, you can tell walnuts are bad because they're never the main flavor of anything. You never see a product advertise flavor. Walnut. <laughs> Furniture only is when that happens. <laughs> If it's in food, it's always like, maple walnut. And let's be honest, maple is gonna be doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> this happens too much in the food world, I think. They'll take a bad food and try to pair it up with something better to try to sneak it into our lives. I think it needs to stop. The most egregious example of this, of course, is cinnamon raisin. <laughs> Why are those two still together? <laughs> if I was cinnamon's PR manager, I'd be like, break up with raisin immediately. You're Cinnamon Kid, you're a star! Everyone loves you, you can make it to the top on your own! Stop being seen in public with Raisin! Like, all Raisin is doing is dragging down Cinnamon's image. People are afraid of Cinnamon things because they think Raisin might be there. Would you like a Cinnamon bun? I don't know. Will Raisin be in attendance? That's the worst place to find a raisin. Is it a cinnamon bun when you least expect it? Ugh, it's terrible. Ruins your whole day. Because not only are they gross, they also do not cool down. 
at the same speed as the rest of the bun. It's a safety concern. I don't understand how raisins manage to maintain the specific heat capacity of the center of a star. Anytime you take a cinnamon bun with raisins in it out of the oven or microwave, depending on your life choices, you can wait 20 minutes. I think it's ready to eat. No, it is not. There are seven wrinkled balls of lava waiting for you. I will never understand how cinnamon and raisin got together in the first place. Yes, I'm still talking about this. <laughs> Must have been a bad breakup. That's the only thing that makes sense. I've thought a lot about it. I think cinnamon got dumped by brown sugar, probably. <laughs> Just wandering the streets one night, its standards impossibly low. I'll never find a more perfect pairing. <laughs> And then some shriveled up creep came around the corner. <laughs> hey. I used to be a grape, you know. <laughs> you wanna go ruin some cookies? 